All right, I have a sculpt sent in for critique from Alexandra. Alexandra says, hello, Folly, it is Labassi here. Uh, I've watched your streams not too long ago. I, of course, remember you from, from my Twitch as well as YouTube channel. Haven't seen you around too often on the stream. Uh, I was wondering if you're still doing critiques. If that's the case, could you possibly check out my last character? The concept sculpt is mine. And I don't have a specific reference image, but this is what I've spent my time looking at, this cute little cute little guy up here. Uh, I would like to be critiqued on mainly proportions, style, and silhouette. Anything, since I'm more or less new to characters. Also, if you're still streaming your critiques on Friday, I wanted to know if you switched the time in case I am missing them. So no, I have not switched the time. I'm just really not streaming as much as I used to. I've been working on a new course for like the past six months, and we're, I'm, I've been in the end game here for like the past month or so. So I've been trying to work on that as much as I can. And that's coming out on March 31st. Uh, and then after that, I should have a lot more time for, um, for streams. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to read this and hope you have a wonderful day. Well, thank you, Alexandra. I hope uh, that you're having a wonderful day as well whenever you end up watching this. Uh, so you mentioned proportion style silhouette. So we can go ahead and take a look at that and uh, a couple other things. I'm going to turn off your poly paint so we can just kind of look at the, the form and go from there. So the first thing that really kind of stood out to me, <laughs> he's, he's a fun guy. I, I was looking up some bat anatomy and I think this will really help you out. So really my first piece of advice here would be to look up some anatomy for some bats. And it doesn't have to even really be this specific bat, but with a quick Google for myself, because I don't really, I, I have sculpted some bats before. Actually, I take that back. I was going to say I haven't. I have done some bats in the past for um, Hotel Transylvania. It was actually one of the first jobs that I ever got paid for. It was for an amusement park ride. Uh, I got to create like four different bats for it. It was a lot of fun. But uh, what you're going to learn from looking at bat anatomy even though you're trying to create something that's maybe more cartoony or stylized, or, or you know what, maybe you're not. But if you are, anatomy is still going to be very helpful in that regard. So with just a quick glance at some bat anatomy, some, some skeletons, the first thing I noticed was that this joint right here is actually bending the wrong way. Uh, bat arms kind of work uh, a little bit similar to how it works in human. You have your scapula, and crazy complicated shoulder girdle area here and then it kind of goes directly down into that first joint there so I recommend looking at some anatomy and then going from there and after you've kind of taken a quick glance just to kind of figure out general direction of some different form and shape what I recommend doing on these wings is cutting them off to kind of help you uh, just have a little bit more control here so what I'm using is some selection tools, specifically the selection lasso. So by default, if you hold control and shift, it will give you this select rectangle shape. But while holding control and shift, just click up here and select the selection lasso. So you can make a lasso selection like I just did there. Then I'm just going to delete your subdivision levels. I think at this stage, they're not really super important. Uh, and we'll be doing some cleanup here in just a moment either way. So let me go ahead and split those off. You can find that under your split, split hidden right there. So now we have two separate sub tools and we can dynamesh or work with these however we want. I recommend keeping them pretty low resolution though as we want them to be as easy to work with as possible. I'll do the same thing up here on your bat. I have a feeling if I dynamesh this though, we're gonna lose a lot of information. You know what? Actually, we're not really losing all too much. Let me up that resolution just a little bit more and we'll go from there. I think that's a pretty good kind of middle ground here. So the reason I want you to split off your wings from your body is so that you can have a little bit more control over the initial shape here of your torso. You can come through and try to figure out the roundness here and the exact shape that you want to achieve. And I'm not gonna do a ton here with proportions and kind of line it up with some anatomical reference. I don't think I'll have enough time for that per se. But I think once you start really getting in and looking at your reference, you'll just have a lot easier time if this is kind of split off and separated. So after you spend some time kind of cleaning up and trying to figure out this shape a little bit more, 
I have a feeling it's not going to be quite so angled, but maybe it will. I'm not really too positive. Uh, I would come into your wings, maybe, let's see, let's do a quick little Ziri mesh down here. Clean that up. So I use DynaMesh very quickly at a low resolution just to close your holes, uh, close the holes on the mesh here, as well as a Ziri mesh to just simplify the geometry. So pretty easy to do. DynaMesh and Ziri mesh. And I only ran Ziri mesh at 0.1, no extra fancy features or anything like that. So then, like I said, uh, just make sure you're following your reference a little bit more accurately. Uh, it looks like to me that the first joint is kind of backwards to what you have. So if if I were doing this, I think you can do it the way you were doing it, where you're sculpting like the wing uh, arm combo, because that is how it works. I would probably start off by just doing the actual bony landmarks of the arms. Start off with that. Well, let's see here. Let me duplicate that if I can. I'm just control clicking and dragging with move on my transpose line. And just start combining geometry until you figure out the proportions and bony landmarks here. And bats have a pretty large wingspan. I know you have yours wrapped up here and this is very even and everything else from one joint to the next, but obviously with some more uh, anatomical knowledge and reference, I think you'll be able to get pretty far with this technique. And then after you're done with that, what I recommend doing is then, you know, you can sit here and combine these up with DynaMesh or whatever you want to use, it's totally up to you. Then I recommend using some additional geometry that you can either, you, know, you can pull it out, extract it, start creating that shape of the wing. There's a million different ways to go about that. Uh, so kind of pick your poison on that. But that's really all I'll say about the wings. I more so just wanted to comment on the uh, anatomical differences that I was noticing and uh, give you a uh, couple suggestions there for how you could um, kind of take that to the next level. In terms of the blanket here that he's his swaddled cloth, <laughs> it's a little thick. I think that's really the only thing that kind of bothers me here in the uh, larger form. So to kind of thin that out, let's see what you got going on here. It looks like this is one-sided, if I'm not mistaken. It is. So let's see. Let's, um, let's bring this down a couple subdivision levels. And I'm just going to chop off some of this here. And I'm going to break some of your geometry, but that's kind of what I'm known for here. So we'll just delete all of that. And now all I have, if we can smooth that, is just this very simple kind of one-sided uh, one sided mesh. So your blanket was looking very thick. That was the kind of main thing that really stood out to me there. And then the other thing, I saw that you kind of hand sculpted, if we scroll back, uh, I saw that you hand sculpted kind of this overlap. I would say try, uh, when creating clothing, to make things as physically accurate to how they would work in reality as possible. It's just going to make it a lot easier on you in general. Uh, so for something like this, I would probably split or delete some polygons here in the front. There's a lot of different ways we could go about this, but the geometry isn't really conducive to what I want to do here, so let me um, let me just go through in here. I'll just separate this very poorly and quickly, <laughs> just to kind of uh, separate this a little bit. So we'll do that. Again, uh, very messy, just kind of done here quick. Maybe I can clean it up a little bit real fast. But uh, this kind of gives you the opportunity, maybe we can Z-remesh this if I go down into our Z-remesher menu. Let me turn off half and just try Z-remeshing this really fast. Let me try a little trick here. I'm going to add some subdivision levels and go to delete subdivision levels. I'm, I'm going to cheat your geometry essentially and go to edge loop, group loops, close that and go back into Z-remesher and try Z-remeshing one more time really low just in an attempt to get something a little bit more uh, more feasible to work with. So a quick few things here to clean that up really quick. It's still gonna take me a little bit longer if I wanna really clean up this area. There's just a couple little things here and there that are kind of getting in the way. 
The objective here, though, is uh, what I want you to do is to try to make this as kind of physically accurate as as I mentioned, as you as you possibly can. It'd probably be easier if I just made a cylinder and kind of redid it so I had something a little bit more clean to work with, topology-wise. But uh, here's what I'm talking about in terms of physical accuracy, kind of just actually taking the cloth and physically wrapping it around and kind of tucking it in on itself and playing with that for a while until you get something that you like, something that looks really nice. Uh, for, for this, really, though, I don't think it's going to take too much in terms of overlap. I think you can get the effect that you want for the um, stylation. What's going on here? Okay, so ZBrush just crashed on me. ZBrush 2019, we got that new update, so still a little unstable in a, a lot of simple things, I guess. But uh, essentially what I want you to do, uh, I think what I was saying was, I want you to physically overlay this cloth. I don't think it'll be that hard. I think it'll be easier if you maybe start with some, uh, some geometry that's a little bit more clean, a little bit easier to work with, and then from there uh, kind of do uh, what I'm attempting to do here and just kind of overlay it. And then from there, once you're done with all of that, grab your Z Modeler brush, hover over a polygon, hold the space bar, extrude all polygons, and just like that, you can click, drag, and add some thickness to your blanket. And then I'm just pressing the D key to add kind of a dynamic uh, subdivision level there, so it looks like it's smooth. If you want to add actual subdivision levels, of course you can do that with Control D as well. Uh, one caveat with this technique, though, is that you need to scroll on down here under Display Properties. Make sure Double is turned off and see if your normals are flipped. On extruding one-sided geometry, depending on the direction you extrude it, can cause your normals to flip. So just click on Flip and that'll fix that up for you. So that's what I recommend on the blanket. Uh, in terms of sculpting folds and everything else, uh, I think you can get away with kind of a lot of larger form uh, form changes here and uh, get pretty far with what you already have here. So try to keep it clean and simple and low poly, and I think you'll be able to get pretty far with uh, something neat here. All right, in terms of the actual bat, his face and everything else, let's go ahead and talk about a few principles that... I would like you to keep in mind here. To make him a little bit easier, let me do a quick little remesh on him so we have something that's a little bit more clean. All right, so very quickly, I have gone through and given this some subdivision levels and then projected the uh, original mesh back onto this. So from here, what I would like you to do is exactly that. If you're unfamiliar with how to work with subdivision workflow for something like this, uh, all I did was duplicate your mesh and um, Z remesh the original piece, the one with uh, our undo history, because I sometimes like to hold on to that. And then I went through and uh, just ran a very simple Z remesher on this. I think I did 2K Z remesh, and then went into the projection menu and projected that at each subdivision level as I went up. And I only gave it a few subdivisions there, so nothing too crazy. So let's get in here now that we have something a little bit more uh, clean to work with and talk about some of the changes that you can make here. Before I kind of talk about some fundamental stuff, I would first like you to uh, work a little bit on your eyes and your mouth and some ways that you can make them interact a little bit better than what you have right now. For instance, on your uh, mouth, I think it would be a lot easier if you actually gave this a physical cavity uh, to actually hold a, a little bit of a mouth bag here. There's a lot of ways you can go about doing this. I very quickly just created a mask and kind of pulled the geometry up and in there. And from there, you can go ahead and start sculpting some of the additional form around the mouth and give it a little bit of a cavity or negative in there. If you're having trouble being able to see or get up in there, what I recommend doing is just either temporarily hiding part of your lower jaw or even uh, separating that completely and merging it back down later. I typically do that quite, uh, quite a lot on my mouths. And then for the eye, I recommend actually sculpting in an eye socket. 
So you could do this with something like the standard brush really quickly and just start carving in there. You could also use something like your mask pen brush and try to figure out a nice size here and start making a mask and that looks pretty good. We'll, we'll stick with that. Grab your transpose or 3D gizmo and just kind of slide that geometry in. You could also use your move brush. I mean, there's, there's only a billion ways to move geometry in this program, so take your pick. And then from there, uh, just kind of start sculpting and working on the interactive areas here, kind of um, keeping the actual shape of the eye in mind. The eyelids are not going to be perfectly round here. If you look at the shape, we do have these corners kind of going uh, kind of at, uh, I guess, like a 45 degree angle here to the face. So for something like that, uh, what I recommend doing is using the move brush with AccuCurve, which will allow you to pull some sharper points down. If you're not familiar with AccuCurve, that is in the brush curve menu right there, AccuCurve. So grab that and try to play around with it. Essentially what AccuCurve does is it just gives you a, a little sharp point that you can pull out on your move brush or, you know, push in or whatever. So it just gives you a little bit tighter, um, tighter selection. And then we can go ahead and keep working with our move brush to kind of push and pull this geometry around here and play with that a little bit more. For the actual eyes, uh, you have two of these. I'm going to delete one and we can just mirror this over to the other side. For your eye and subsequently your eyelids, what I recommend doing is duplicating your eye, grabbing a slice curve brush, which you can find by holding the control and shift key, clicking up here and finding slice curve, and just draw a line from corner to corner, slicing your eyeball in half. And it doesn't have to be anything clean or special, it will give you a nice clean, uh, perfect edge loop or slice through there. It will actually slice the geometry. Then we can separate these, or actually before we separate them, let's go ahead and either scale it up or inflate it. I'll just do a quick scale up. I think that'll be fine. And I will just select one of these, split it off, again, under the split, split hidden menu there. And from there, I mean, we, we pretty much got the job done for the basic eyelid. All we have to do is rotate these and move them out of the way. Uh, I think, you know what, let's, let's close holes on both of these just to make it a little bit faster. And I will move my pivot point here. Actually, my pivot point's already centered. If you don't know how to do that with your transpose line, it's the white circle. I believe with the 3D gizmo, it is the uh, little Google map home button. It'll, if you hover over these, it'll say what it is. So unmask mesh center. So that's the one that you're going to want to click on with the 3D gizmo. And then, of course, you know, you can come in here and rotate these. Oh, we don't want to rotate our eye. We want to actually rotate our eyelid. And we can start rotating these and figuring out uh, a good place for those. So play around with rotating and moving these around for a little bit. As you can see here, with just a couple quick moves, we're already starting to get in the general direction that we want to. We just got some thickness and thinness in places where it should be kind of flip-flopped. So we'll play around with this for just a minute here. Kind of push and pull, move and groove. And we're getting there slowly. But after you've kind of got that into a nice place, then you can take the time to, I'll just combine these and mirror and weld them over to the other side. I'll do the same thing with the eyeball, mirror and weld. And... Try not to change our color on us. All right, cool. So we've started to create some actual physical eyelids here, which is a very good thing. I think that's kind of the direction that you want to go in in a lot of these, uh, in a lot of these subtools. So same thing with the mouth, make that mouth cavity physically present. I think you could do the same thing even here with your nose and start kind of carving in a bit more for your nostrils and. The shape there is actually quite a bit different than what I'm seeing here, so kind of figure that out a little bit more, figure out the directionality. It's got a very weird nose. It looks like it's almost um, deviated there, a little strange. But yeah, play around with that. I think that'll uh, be a good direction for, for most things here. And then the the final thing here that I'll say about your, your, your cute little bat is that uh, I want you to pay attention to the fundamental of avoiding parallels. 
Essentially, what I mean by that is uh, avoiding parallels wherever you possibly can. Uh, so this not only refers to uh, parallel lines, but it also refers to curves and just kind of mirroring the same shape everywhere. So for instance, in our, uh, our little, little bat guy's ear up here, we have this curve that kind of wraps up to the ear, and we have pretty much the same identical curve on the identical curve, that's a fun one, identical curve on the other side, uh, and you have a little bit of some kind of uh, dip in going on here, but these are the kind of things that I would try to push a little bit more, and um, just to kind of help push the, the form to get it away from looking so similar and boring. Of course, you're gonna work, want to um, look at your reference and try to figure out what that shape looks like exactly, but this would be my recommendation just in general for a lot of the form that you have here. Uh, in, your, in your face, you kind of have a little bit of the same thing going on here. I think more so than that, the face shape is just kind of a little bit all over the place and not really um, paying attention to too much of the bony structure here. So I would say you're just kind of lacking some, maybe just some volume and some form around this area where some of these bony landmarks around the skull would take place. I say, in general, take a glance at a bat skeleton and figure it out from there. But there's there's a lot of room here for, for improvement in that regard. In terms of stylization, I think you have a good direction here, and I think it could work really well. I think with just a little bit more TLC in some of the areas that I pointed out, though, you can uh, get this headed in a really cool direction overall. Uh, th this kind of fur texture up here, like this kind of stuff, this is really nice. Uh, so I would try to, once you figure out a kind of direction that you want to go with this, try to figure out some more areas where you can start getting some more of those like little little fur tufts. Maybe you can play around with that move accu curve brush that I pointed out to you earlier, or maybe play around with some alphas or something else. There's there's a lot of room here for experimentation and in terms of, uh, did I say fur? I think bats have hair. Either way, it's pretty much the same thing. It's, it's not important. I think you understand what I'm saying here. Well, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, like I said, good luck with this, and I look forward to seeing what kind of progress you make on this cute little guy in the future.